Now, the next couple problems deal with this distance equals rate times time scenario that you should remember from one course or another along the way. The D stands for distance, R is the rate, and T equals time. So these are just really easy problems so that you get straight what these things stand for. This says, how far does a biker travel if he bikes at 8 miles per hour for 3 hours? Well, let's fill in these things. He bikes at 8 miles per hour. Look at the units. 8 miles per hour means that is a rate. That goes in for the R. T is 3 hours. Hours is a unit of time. So evidently what we're looking for is distance because that's the missing letter. Of course, the other reason we know this is distance is because it said how far that relates to distance. Multiply that together and distance is 24 miles because the units were miles per hour. Now, this is a little bit different than I'm asking you for, but it's still distance equals rate times time. How long does it take a car to travel 400 miles? Miles is a unit for distance, so I put the 400 here. At 80 miles per hour, miles per hour is a rate, so what I'm looking for is the T. I know I'm looking for the T because it says how long, which is talking about time. This one requires a little bit of solving. Divide both sides by 80 and t equals 5 hours. Third scenario, how fast is a car traveling if it covers 600 miles in 10 hours? So 600 miles, that's a unit for distance. In 10 hours, that's the time. What I don't have is the rate. Divide both sides by 10 and you're going to get a rate of 60 miles per hour. So those were just three easy problems to get you warmed up using distance equals rate times time so you would understand two things. One is take a look at the units and that helps you decide if you've been given D, R, or T. That's one thing. The other thing is that sometimes we actually have to solve and set up a division problem before we can get the answer. So let's look at an actual problem. Maddie drove 150 miles in the same amount of time that it took a plane to travel 600 miles. The speed of the plane was 150 miles per hour faster than the speed of the car. Find the speed of the plane, and a lot of people look at the problem like that and just freak because there's just so much in it. Anytime you see something with miles and miles per hour, you need to think about distance equals rate times time, and you need to think about setting up a chart just like this. I have a column for rate, a column for time, and a column for distance, and rate times time equals distance. We also need to label these two sides over here. What's going on is we have somebody driving a car and somebody in a plane. So we could call this one car and call this one plane. Or we could have called this uh, driving and this flying. Whatever you want to name it to, to designate one row and the other. So she drove 150 miles. Just stop right there. 150 miles. That's a distance, and it's the distance for the driving, which is the car. So that goes in this box, 150. In the same amount of time, we're going to come back to this in a minute. We're just going to go through the problem and fill in any real numbers that we can. So in the same amount of time that it took the plane to travel 600 miles. Miles is distance, and this is the plane's distance. So we've got two of our boxes filled in. That's good. The speed of the plane was 150 miles per hour faster than the speed of the car. The speed of the plane was 150 miles per hour faster than the speed of the car. The car is the slower one, obviously. Planes are faster. So we're going to let the car's rate just be R. The plane is 150 miles per hour faster, which is like 150 more than, which gives me R plus 150. Okay, so those are the four out of the six boxes you can fill in with basic information that you are given basically word for word. Now, to get the time, the only thing I know about the time is that these two times are equal, but I don't have anything in the boxes to set equal. I have to think about this. If R times T equals D, then I could solve for T by dividing both sides by R. We did that on one of those previous problems. So an expression for time is d over r. What this is telling me is that all I have to do to fill in these two boxes for time is put the distance over the rate. So I'm putting the 150, which is the distance, over the rate. I'm going to do the same thing on this row. Put the distance of 600 over the rate, 
of r plus 150. And now I'm going to use this idea about the same amount of time. So I take the time for the car, which is 150 over r, and I set that equal to the time for the plane, 600 over r plus 150. Finally, we have something we can solve. It's a cross product because it's a fraction equal to a fraction, meaning this is a proportion. Multiply here gives us 600 r. Multiply here, and remember this is going to be a distributive situation, is me 150 r. 150 times 150 is 225 with two zeros on it. Solve that equation, subtract 150 r from both sides, gives this 450 r equals 22500. Divide both sides by 450 and r is 50 miles per hour. Now it says find the speed of the plane. We found out r. Our r was the rate for the car. We need to take that 50 and plug it in right there, add that together, and the speed of the plane will be 200 miles per hour. All right, another one similar because it's rate, time, and distance, but this is upstream and downstream. If, if you've ever done any canoeing or kayaking, you know if you are going downstream, you're moving faster because the stream is helping you. If you're paddling upstream, you're moving more slowly because the current is pushing you back. It is still a distance equals rate times time problem. We're still going to fill in our boxes with, with what we know. What we have to label over here, though, relates to upstream and downstream. It says the speed of Lazy River's current is 5 miles an hour. That's just the current itself. If a boat travels 20 miles downstream in the same time that it takes to travel, miles, to travel 10 miles upstream, find the speed of the boat in still water. The speed of the boat in still water is like pretend you were sitting on a pond and paddling. You don't have any kind of current at all. So that's what we're looking for is really how hard you're doing the paddling. What we have to label over here is upstream and downstream. So it's, no, it's not like a plane in a car like the last one. This is upstream and downstream. We can still fill in these numbers. If a boat travels 20 miles downstream, that's the distance for down. In the same time it takes to travel 10 miles upstream, that's the distance for up. Find the speed of the boat in still water. Find the speed of the boat in still water. So I'm going to let x equal the speed of the boat in still water. So x is the speed of the boat. Well, if you are traveling, let's do downstream first because that might make better sense to you. If you are traveling downstream, you are paddling at x miles per hour. At the same time, you have a current of 5 miles an hour helping you. So your total rate downstream is x plus 5. Opposite idea here, if you are traveling upstream, you're paddling at x miles an hour, but as you are pushing, you've got the current pushing you back, x minus 5. We don't know anything about the time other than the time is the same, so I can do like I did a minute ago and get our time as just an expression. Put the distance over the rate, so x over x minus 5, 20 over x plus 5. And it tells us that it can travel this downstream and upstream in the same time. So my equation is 10 over x minus 5 equals 20 over x plus 5. We have a fraction equal to a fraction, so we can just cross multiply. Distribute, which gives you 10x plus 50 equals 20x minus 100. Subtract 10x from both sides gives me 10x. Add 100 to both sides is 150. Divide both sides by 10 and x is 15 miles per hour. So you are paddling at 15 miles an hour, but you've got the current helping or hurting you depending on if you're going up or downstream. So that's just a couple examples of some of the word problems that are in section 6.6.